Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's video takes a look and explains the weapon system shown on the victory parade held by China in early September 2025. We begin this video series with the offensive missile systems displayed. The many different and exotic anti-shipping missiles will be focused on in the next, separate video of this series. Most of the attack missile systems shown were presented within their launch tubes and containers, which prevented observers from seeing the actual missiles and their specific features. In this video, we will rank and explain each of the new attack missile types that were shown. So like and subscribe to the channel, as it really helps with the algorithm. This ranking is subjective and particularly challenging due to the mentioned fact that most of the missiles are not visible inside their launch tubes. Nevertheless, let's start. Rank number one is assigned to the CJ-1000 hypersonic intercontinental range cruise missile, the first of its kind. Similar to its predecessor, the CJ-100, the CJ-1000 has never been seen clearly outside its launch container. However, in comparison to the CJ-100, it has undergone a significant increase in length. This suggests the incorporation of a second booster stage, which accelerates the ramjet-powered main stage. As a result, it is believed that whereas the CJ-100 could achieve ranges around 4,000 kilometers, the CJ-1000 variant is rated for intercontinental ranges of 8 to 9,000 kilometers. This enables it to reach the west coast of the United States and target high-value assets stationed there, such as naval vessels in port or missile defense radars. The purpose behind the CJ-1000 and its predecessor, the CJ-100, is their very high flight profile, yet remaining inside the atmosphere. This means it cannot be intercepted by systems such as the ground-based interceptor or the SM-3 missile, both designed to counter intercontinental ballistic missiles in outer space. Instead, the CJ-1000 follows a depressed trajectory, near and mostly within the atmosphere, until its main stage activates its ramjet propulsion to sustain its high cruise speed until impact. This represents a formidable technological challenge due to the aerodynamic heating endured by the main stage during prolonged flight, as well as the necessity of maintaining suitable operating conditions for the air-breathing ramjet propulsion system to function. While it is possible that China has mastered scramjet propulsion for the CJ-1000, it is more likely that a highly sophisticated ramjet propulsion system is utilized. The goal for both propulsion types is the same, maintain a speed of above Mach 5, which is regarded as threshold for hypersonic missiles. In this specific and rare weapon category, only the shorter-ranged Russian Zircon hypersonic cruise missile is similar to the CJ-100 and CJ-1000, allowing for a sufficiently low flight trajectory to counter the aforementioned US missile defense systems. This type of weapon forces the adversary to develop new and costlier missile defenses that operate on a completely different way, inside the atmosphere. This is a very difficult challenge that the United States is attempting to address with the Golden Dome program, a project which includes the development of space-based missile interceptors. This would be an expensive countermeasure to a challenging system like the CJ-1000, successfully forcing the adversary to spend resources on a completely different missile defense concept. However, even against such potential counters, the pseudo-random evasive maneuvering, enabled by the speed-sustaining ramjet propulsion, makes countering this strategic weapon system exceptionally difficult. The second rank can be attributed to the DF-61 Mobile Heavy Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, a designation that only became known to the public hours before the parade. This surprise was, again, a missile system presented inside a launch tube with no means to see its actual details. However, the DF-61 is externally almost identical to its DF-41 predecessor. It is therefore believed that its primary differences lie in an enhanced capability to penetrate missile defenses. This can be achieved by a more sophisticated, quick-acting post-boost vehicle, which not only deploys the re-entry vehicles onto their strike trajectory, but also deploys penetration aids. These are decoys that are so difficult to distinguish from the actual warheads that they overwhelm the missile defenses and force the defender to engage all targets appearing on radar screens, which can number in the dozens. Consequently, 
the DF-61 could be a modification that utilizes new miniaturized re-entry vehicles with a lower weight, in turn, using the freed-up throw weight to carry heavy penetration aids that re-enter the atmosphere alongside the real warheads. While this explanation remains speculative, such an improvement could enhance the missile's wartime performance so significantly that a change in its official designation is justified. The true operational differences between the DF-41 and the DF-61 will likely remain unknown for the foreseeable future, as this intercontinental range strategic nuclear missile represents one of the most critical components of the Chinese nuclear triad. Rank number three is given to the DF-31BJ, China's new silo-based intercontinental range ballistic missile. This improvement upon the DF-31 utilizes a new basing mode, specifically believed to be that of large silo fields, combined with the shell game concept. In this concept, mobile missile transporters move both real and fake missile tubes around the silo fields to confuse an adversary's space-based intelligence sensors regarding the precise location of an actual missile inside a silo. For this purpose, it is believed that the DF-31BJ variant employs a specialized new mobile transporter system that can quickly change the missile tubes positioned within the silos. Therefore, this concept would mean that a significant proportion of the silos are actually empty targets without a real missile inside. An adversary planning a nuclear counterforce strike against the hardened silo field would consequently be forced to use an impractically high number of nuclear warheads to ensure the silo field could not launch a retaliatory second strike. This shell game concept was famously proposed in the past for the United States MX Peacekeeper ICBM program. The specific details of the actual BJ missile variant remain unknown, but it is likely that the emphasis is once again on improved penetration of adversary missile defenses. Consequently, it may utilize a new lightweight re-entry vehicle to allow for heavy penetration aids to be carried along with the real warheads, as was previously described for the DF-61. Rank number 4 should belong to the JL-3 submarine-launched intercontinental ballistic missile, which is directly related to the mentioned DF-31 missile. Similar to the DF-31BJ and the DF-61, the actual operational difference of the JL-3 compared to the JL-2 predecessor remains unknown, and is believed to be once again related to the penetrative performance against missile defenses. Like with the previous missiles, this improvement is speculated to be enabled by a new miniaturized lightweight re-entry vehicle, a technology barrier that has now likely been mastered by the Chinese strategic missile forces. Rank number 5 can be attributed to the JL-1 air-launched ballistic missile. This worldwide unique capability is believed to have been created by the same team which was responsible for the DF-26 intermediate-range ballistic missile. It is carried by China's relatively old, long-range subsonic H-6 bomber. The key capability this missile enables for China's strategic forces is the differing attack vector that the air launch concept provides. It can therefore circumvent the direction toward which the adversary's missile defenses are primarily oriented and can be launched from a less defended blind spot. Its fragile subsonic carrier aircraft can remain in comparably safe airspace because of the vast range the JL-1 possesses which is believed to be between 4,000 and 6,000 kilometers. Thus, the tactical flexibility offered by the combined weapon system range of 10,000 kilometers, which includes the estimated 4,000 kilometers combat radius of the H-6 bomber, is a highly useful capability for the Chinese strategic forces. An asset very well suited to perform an unexpected surprise attack. The two-stage JL-1 flies on a depressed trajectory without gaining excessive altitude allowing it to stay beneath the line of sight of radar early warning systems. Once in the target area, the maneuverable re-entry vehicle re-enters the atmosphere and performs a so-called pop-up maneuver. In this maneuver, the elongated shape of the re-entry vehicle causes a comparatively low-G, smooth deceleration, enabling it to pop up from the atmosphere which can help with initial target acquisition by the radar seeker housed inside its nose. Then, on the second dive and glide, the target is firmly locked on, and the re-entry vehicle's speed has sufficiently decreased to avoid the thermal issues associated with high-speed re-entry of a seeker-equipped maneuverable re-entry vehicle. China first mastered this type of maneuverable re-entry vehicle in the DF-21C variant from the mid-2000s. 
This technology was further developed into the DF-26, and the experience gained was used to finally create the JL-1. Rank number 6 belongs to the DF-26D variant, an intermediate-range ballistic missile with a range in excess of 4,000 kilometers. The D variant is believed to be externally very similar to the known DF-26C, but because the missile was shown inside its launch container, any changes from the C variant remain speculative. It is believed that the main difference for the D variant lies in its improved autonomous target acquisition, identification, and attack capabilities. Due to the missile's long range and its mission requirement to be capable of striking moving adversary naval vessels, autonomous target acquisition without the need for an external data link is of the greatest importance. If a distant target is detected by any sensors or means, and the missile is launched toward the general area where the target was last observed, the missile's inherent capability to search for, reliably find and lock onto that specific target, is critically important. Such detection is mainly accomplished by radar, but the exact improvements that would make the DF-26D variant nearly a fire-and-forget weapon, remain unclear and speculative. It could be only an artificial intelligence upgrade for robust target identification. But highly exotic methods such as a sub-orbital sensor probe, a one-time-use mini-satellite, accompanying the missile have been rumored since years, but never got concrete. Alternatively, it could be something completely different, like a heavy warhead variant intended for use against highly hardened targets. However, lack of visible details concerning the missile does not allow for any firm conclusion to be drawn on the DF-26D. Ranked at number 7 is the giant DF-5C missile. This system is a modification of the DF-5B heavy, liquid propellant intercontinental ballistic missile, believed to be designed for what is termed a fractional orbital bombardment system. With a stated capability for infinite range, this missile can strike targets anywhere around the globe, enabling attacks to be launched from the rear. It does not follow a traditional ballistic trajectory, as its heavy nuclear warhead is instead placed into a low Earth orbit at a comparatively low altitude of approximately 200 kilometers. Its new and improved post-boost vehicle enables it to approach the United States from the Southern Hemisphere, a region not well covered by missile defense systems and their sensors. When it approaches the target, the post-boost vehicle deorbits the re-entry vehicle, placing it onto a ballistic dive trajectory. This missile is believed to carry the most powerful thermonuclear strategic warheads in the People's Liberation Army arsenal, with a yield of several megatons. However, the silo-based launch concept of the DF-5C and its low silo quantity remain its weak spot. Rank number 8 belongs to the CJ-20A subsonic land attack cruise missile. This improvement upon the CJ-10 is believed to incorporate advanced AI-assisted target recognition capabilities, possibly even against moving targets. It is also believed to possess an improved maximum range of beyond 2,000 kilometers, enabled by a new improved mini turbofan engine. It represents a relatively low-cost asset for the long-range strike capabilities of the People's Liberation Army, when compared to high-end cruise missile assets like the aforementioned CJ-100 and CJ-1000. It's likely a conventional-only missile, having given up its predecessor's nuclear role to the mentioned super and hypersonic cruise missiles and their much higher defense penetration capability. In summary, all these eight missile systems are capable to carry strategic and tactical nuclear warheads. Each weapon deserves its own dedicated video, but this video is a good overview on the new weapons unveiled during the parade, which famously even kept the US president awake. The displayed capabilities will certainly have great implications of the future of warfare. So much is clear. Write in the comments if you want to see more China-related content. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.